This past week in Wall Street, a bunch of Redditors were able to out Wall Street, Wall Street. They basically said, Reddit or not, here we come. You can't hide. We're going to find you and make you want me. And that's exactly what happened in Wall Street. Shout out to the Fugees for that very apropos song. So on today's episode of Saz Talks Money, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break down exactly what happened in Wall Street into three main components. Number one, the key players in this saga. Number two, what happened and what will happen next. And number three, most importantly, how this affects your money. Let's talk money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. All right, so let's get into exactly what in the world happened in Wall Street this past week and try to make some sense from it. And let's start with who the key players in this saga were. First and foremost, the protagonist or main character or characters in this entire story would be none other than the Reddit account Wall Street Bets. This is basically a forum where individual investors discuss hot stocks that they like. So there'll be more on that throughout this episode, more to come on that. The second person or character in this story is obviously Wall Street or specifically these Wall Street firms or hedge funds, namely Citadel Securities, Melvin Capital and Citron Research. These firms got burned real bad by trying to short the market and short certain stocks. Ain't nobody feel bad for them. Now, the next cast of characters here are these meme stocks that these hedge funds were trying to short, namely GameStop or the ticker symbol GME. We've all heard of them. They've been all throughout the news throughout the week. GameStop, they're basically like a blockbuster video, but for video games. We can go in, test out video games, buy video games. They're sort of a fledging company that is a sort of skirting by during the pandemic, but they're not the only company that was being shorted. Other companies include AMC, the movie theater, Express, where I used to go shopping in the 90s, Bed Bath & Beyond, where my mom loves to shop. You got Blackberry, the phone that I had back in 2002. And last but not least, Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll is a public traded company that has candy. So these are some of the companies that were being shorted and they've taken on the name, the meme stock. So you can check out the memes right there. Who else was a part of this saga? Well, trading platforms, namely Robinhood. Robinhood is sort of the unofficial stock trading platform for Wall Street bets, but they were not the only firm to get caught up in the drama. You had firms like Schwab and Vanguard that experienced outages during the frenzy of trading. Then you got basically business leaders taking a look at what's going on, and they're basically saying, what the hell's going on, given their opinion? Namely, you got Elon Musk, you got Mark Cuban, you got famed investor Shamath Palapatiya, we'll talk about him in a second. You got Michael Burry, famous for the big short. You got the Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, who knows all about manipulating the market. He served two years in jail for doing that. You got Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool Sports. He's day trading like crazy throughout the pandemic. He's got some uh, beef to pick, with specifically with Robinhood, with their CEO, Vlad Tenev. And then you got Steve Cohn. He's the new, o- new owner of the New York Mets. He's a hedge fund guy. He's basically on Twitter arguing with some of his Mets fans and New York locals. And he says, look, I got to get off Twitter. This is too much drama here. Last but not least, you got Adina Friedman. She's the CEO of the NASDAQ. She's basically saying, what in the world is happening on here? So that's a cast of characters here on the business leader side. Then you got politicians, obviously, they're saying, hold on, there's some drama going in. We want in on this. Who's the queen of the drama? Well, none other than AOC, Alexandria Cortasio Cortez. She basically says, Look, I don't like what's going on here. Something needs to be done. She's got Ted Cruz on the other side of the aisle saying, AOC, I agree with you. She says, listen, save it, Ted. You almost had me murdered during the insurrection. You can sit this one out. Then you got Elizabeth Warren. You know, she's all about anti-Wall Street. You got Janet Yellen. She's the new uh, Treasury Secretary, first female Treasury Secretary. She used to be chairman of the Fed. She's checking out the situation. And this whole saga goes all the way up to the desk of the President of the United States. You got the Biden administration basically saying, we are monitoring the situation. So it starts on a Reddit account, ends up in Wall Street. You got trading platforms experiencing outages. You got major business leaders weighing in on it. And then it goes all the way throughout to the President of the United States, quote unquote, monitoring the situation. That takes us back to the beginning to what I talked about the main character here, which is this Reddit account called Wall Street 
bets. So here we go. So you got to understand what they were able to do has never been done before. A collection, a collective of amateurs were basically able to take on the Wall Street hedge funds and win. This has never been done before. So this is basically the story has been taken on a very much David versus Goliath feel. Obviously, the Reddit account being the David and the hedge funds being the Goliath. And you know who won that war? You know who won that war? Well, David. David beat Goliath, and is exactly what is happening here today. All right, so those are the key players in this saga. Now let's talk about what actually happened, and let me give you a play-by-play. -play. As everything this past year, it all starts with the pandemic. The coronavirus hits, the stock market plummets, it goes from almost 30,000 down to 18,000, and as they say, you know, buy low, sell high, and a lot of new investors enter the marketplace. So that tees this entire situation up. So enter this Wall Street bet form, a lot of new investors, day traders, they're basically saying, let's take advantage of the lowest market, the stock market's been in almost a decade, let's start investing. They're starting to invest and they're starting to invest in, and they're talking on this form. So that sets the stage for exactly what happens. Then meanwhile, you got these hedge funds doing what they do, looking to take advantage and manipulate the market and, start, and basically short certain stocks. So that's how they get started. And if you're not familiar with short selling, let me just give you a quick little tip with that. It's basically betting against the stock. You don't like it, you don't own it, you don't want it. You're taking out debt essentially to short the stock. And that's how you can lose very badly when the stock goes up. More on that in a second. So these big hedge funds are basically shorting these stocks and these Redditors start to take notice. They say, look, we don't like these Wall Streeters, hedge funds taking advantage of us little guys, let's try to fight back. So they were motivated and galvanized to basically take on the hedge funds. So why, uh, you know, why are they looking to take on the hedge funds? Obviously, they're sick of the corporate greed, the manipulation of the market, and they're basically going to give them a little taste of their own medicine. So basically, here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. The, the, the hedge funds are shorting the market. These guys are trying to fight back, and they get galvanized by none other than Elon Musk. Elon Musk is no fan of short sellers because basically there were millions of short sellers who were trying to short Tesla. We all know what happened with Tesla since the pandemic. They've skyrocketed to the moon. A little shout out to the SpaceX right there. So basically, Elon Musk is basically saying, listen, I don't like any part of this. He quote unquote says this, you can't sell houses you don't own. You can't sell cars you don't own, but you can sell stock you don't own. This is BS, shorting is a scam. So that's Elon Musk's thoughts on this. Obviously, the Redditors pay attention to his every word. They're basically saying, yeah, we agree with this. Let's fight even harder against these hedge fund short sellers. And then Elon Musk sees what's going on and he tweets one word. He goes, game stonks. Game stonks. You've seen the meme with the stonks out there. So he tweets that. Next thing you know, game stocks stock price goes from $2.50 to $5 to $50 to as high as $500. $2 to $500. This is crazy. Obviously, the stock is now cratering these days, but that's what happened in this past week. So Citron Research, one of those hedge funds that I talked about that was famous for short selling, they kind of egged on some of these Reddit investors. Here's what they said. GameStop buyers are the suckers at this poker game. So they sort of poked the bear of these Reddit investors, which only encouraged the Wall Street Bets community to buy even more GameStop stock. So basically what ends up happening is these short sellers, do you know how much they lost? Do you know how much they lost? Not a billion, not five billion, not 10 billion, over $20 billion on GameStop alone. That's a lot of bread right there. That's a lot of games. So basically, the hedge funds are losing money. These Redditor guys are making money. One guy turned $47,000 into $47 million. This is unheard of. This is crazy. So shout out to that guy. Tip of the cap. I hope you sold at the top and actually made some money. Turned in $47,000 to $47 million. This is unheard of. This is crazy. Citron Research is obviously not happy about losing billions and billions and billions of dollars. They basically say that the Reddit users are a quote unquote angry mob and they vow to quit publicly commenting about GameStop. Yeah, no shit you're gonna publicly stop commenting. You just lost a few billion. You might wanna zip it up for a little bit, Citron. So basically that's what happens. And then you got Robinhood. 
Robin Hood stuck in the middle. We all heard that song. Stuck in the middle with you. You got clowns to the left of me. You got jokers to the right. Here they are stuck in the middle. And why is Robin Hood stuck in the middle? Why? Because they get their funding from these big Wall Street firms. So they don't like that they're getting shorted. But all their clients are these individual investors. So they're stuck in the middle and they got to pick a path. So basically what happens is they stop trading. They halt trading. They basically say you can no longer buy the GameStop stock. You can only sell. Now, I'm not sure how well versed you are in the stock market, but if you can't buy and you can only sell, the stock price will only go down. That's just basically how that works. So Robinhood is starting to get a lot of hate. You got Dave Portnoy basically saying, what the hell's going on here? These guys should go to jail. You got Fed regulators, SEC, all commenting on what's going on. The politicians are weighing in. AOC is saying, well, you know, how come these hedge fund guys can treat the economy and the market like uh, like a monopoly game, but all of a sudden when the Reddit guys want to do it, you want to cry and complain and take your ball home. So that's what's going on. There's a lot of drama out there. Basically, Robinhood gets a lot of heat. And in essence, Elon Musk, who was sort of stirring up the controversy, actually does a public phone call with Vlad Tenev, the CEO of Robinhood, and says, dude, what's going on here? Please explain this to me. So Vlad, obviously, he's been on the news. He's been on CNBC. He's been everywhere trying to explain his position on this. He's caught between a rock and a hard place because, again, he answers to Wall Street, but he also has to answer to who his clients are on Robinhood, these individual investors. So where does this all go from here? I feel like it would be appropriate to tell you a quote by the co-founder of Reddit himself. His name is Alex Ohanian. He is the co-founder of Reddit. He tweets, the GameStop squeeze is the public doing what they feel has been done to them by institutions. He goes on to say, this is something to believe in. So the founder of Reddit is basically saying, look, Redditors, I'm behind you. This is dope what you're doing. So the Wall Street, Bet, uh, the Wall Street Bets community here, let me say a few words about them. They are a new, powerful force to be reckoned with. That's for sure. And thanks to technology, they have three major things behind them. These are the three major things that these Redditors, these Wall Street bets have behind them. Number one, they got technology, right? They got all the information on the internet and on their phones they could possibly ever need. The, the playing field is equal. So that's number one, they got information. Number two, they got communication tools, AKA social media, AKA this Reddit community. They got the internet, they can all communicate efficiently together. So those are the two things they got. And number three, they got easy access to the markets. That's exactly what Robinhood is providing with their free trading platform. So you got information, you got communication, and you got easy access to markets. That is a deadly combination where a crew of Redditors can take on Wall Street. And they're using those exact three technology tools. Let me give you another quote. This is a quote by Chamath Palapatia, a uh, tough name to say, but one of the smartest guys out there. He says, Wall Street Bets is now the largest hedge fund in the world. What? Except it's completely decentralized and entirely democratic. This is very reminiscent of Bitcoin. Let me explain that to you and why this whole story is so powerful. He just said this Wall Street Bets community on Reddit, a freaking community on Reddit is now the most powerful hedge fund in the world? Do you understand the ramifications of that? Do you understand that this is literally power to the people when it comes to investing? This is giving Wall Street a run for their own money. Pretty powerful stuff. So with that being said, here's my take on all this stuff going on before I tell you how this affects your money. Here's my take. So what I appreciate about Wall Street Bets is they're serving as a check to these Wall Street firms. They're not, there's gonna be some accountability. This is capital, capitalism at its finest. This is basically saying, oh, you wanna do that? Here's what we're going to do, all right? So we're sick of you throwing your weight around with no concern for the individual investor. We have a voice too. So respect to the Wall Street Bets community for making this type of bold action happen. It's pretty unprecedented. Talking about game stock, let's talk about that stock for a second. So usually, what happens in this type of situation? Because there is history in these types of situations. So basically in a short squeeze situation like this, this is exactly what happened. It was a short sell, they got squeezed out. Uh, the Wall Street firms had to buy the stock price back at a much higher price. Um, usually what ends up happening is the stock ends up falling back to where it 
came from before all the drama started. And we have a case example with Volkswagen back in 2008. They were actually the most valued company on the entire stock market. Obviously, things have come back to reality. Volkswagen is doing what they do, but they're no longer the most highest value stock on the stock market. So that's exactly what I think is going to happen with GameStop. I think their stock is going to fall back to reality. So history suggests that no stock can go up forever. And over time, the stock price generally reflect the future earnings of a company, aka the price earnings ratio. So that's what, exactly why I think GameStop is essentially a manipulated stock. It's been inflated and its stock will come down eventually, if not already. But I also predict that Wall Street bets, they are not done anytime soon. They have now taken their attention to silver and silver is trading at basically decade high. Um, that's where silver is at right now. And quote me on this, I think that they're gonna move next onto Bitcoin. So Bitcoin might be the new darling of this new Wall Street bets community subreddit account. So that's that. Now, most importantly, let's talk about how this all affects your money. So what I've done is I've broken down the five types of people when it comes to investing. So person number one, this is the day trader. They're actively buying and selling stocks. This is probably part of the Wall Street Bets community. They're moving, they're grooving, they're moving with the market. These are the day traders. More on that in a second. Person number two, this is the long-term investor. They have a buy and hold strategy. They're probably using index funds. They believe in passive investing. They're likely maxing out their 401ks or the Roth IRAs. They believe in buy and hold and long-term investing. Person number three, this is what I would call the look but don't touch investor. They're reading the articles. They're reading all the, the, the scripts out there. What's going on? They're keeping up with the news. They're watching the YouTube videos, but they have no or very little money in the stock market. More on those guys in a second. Person number four, this is what I would call the real estate investors. They're all about real estate. They got no time for the stock market. They're all about real estate. And person number five, this is what I would call the people who are just not paying attention. They got no money in the market. They're not investing in real estate. They got no business. They're just kind of, you know, hemming and hawing through life. So here's my advice for those five different types of people when it comes to investing. Let's start with the person who's not paying attention. Here's my advice to you. Wake up, get in the game. Life is passing you by, especially when it comes to your wealth. What I would encourage you to do is start slow. Maybe open up a 401k, have an IRA, start somewhere. But what I would caution you to do is not just start buying individual stocks or start investing and pumping all your money into Bitcoin. But stop pretending that the market doesn't exist. Stop pretending that the stock market doesn't exist, that the real estate market exists, or build a business. Because these are the only ways that you're going to build wealth long term. So pick a path and start slow, but get in the game. Stop being in the sidelines. Person number four, the real estate people. I get it. You love real estate. You're all about real estate. You're looking at buying houses or rentals or you know fixing up properties. You're all about real estate. Cool, I respect that. I wish you luck with that. But there is something called diversification. There's something also called being house rich and cash poor. Having all your money tied up in your house is not a financial plan. That's just basically being stuck like Chuck with a house and maybe a mortgage payment, maybe not but having no money in the marketplace. So my advice to you is diversification. Have a 401k, have a Roth IRA, start investing in index funds. Don't just pretend that the market doesn't exist and just invest in real estate. That's my advice to you. Person number three, who is the look but don't touch? What are you waiting for? You know, they say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Stop talking about the market and giving your opinions and start investing. You know they say the number one way to build wealth when it comes to the stock market, the number one way, it's not, you know, the rate of return or the price earnings ratio on a stock or the the syllabus or basically what's going on with the stocks or the mechanisms of the stock. The number one way to build wealth in the stock market is actually putting money in the market. You can talk about it all day long, but if you have no money in the market, what are you doing? It's a bunch of hot air. So my advice to you is get off the sidelines and get in the game. Person number two, the long-term investor. This is actually me, technically. I'm a long-term investor. I, my first stocks that I ever bought, my 401k, my Roth IRA, was right 
during the financial recession. I heard buy low, sell high. We all heard about that. I started investing in 2008. I knew nothing about investing, but I'm glad that I've basically done the long-term strategy because obviously there's been a bull market for the last decade up until the coronavirus. But the long-term investor, that is a very good strategy. But here's my advice to you, the long-term investor. Take on maybe a little bit more risk. Maybe you take 5%, 10% of your overall asset allocation and you try something a little more risky. Maybe you look into Bitcoin. Maybe you look into gold and silver. Maybe you look into commodities. Maybe you look into something a little more riskier so you get a little more reward or bang for your buck. But for the most part, if you're doing long-term investing, I salute you, kudos to you, keep it up. Now let's talk about person number one who was the day trader. This was the person who's probably on Wall Street bets all over this GameStop thing. I hope you made money on that stock. But here's the flip side to the people who are doing the day trading. Did you know that 90% of day traders do not make money? Let me say that again. 90% of day traders don't make money, it means they lose that money. You know, I'm all about saving that money. So if you're one of those active day traders, I caution you about spending all your money or maybe putting all your money on one stock. I'll read you a quote. Here's one guy, he's a Wall Street bet, Reddit community member. He says, put 100% of my portfolio into game stock because of you idiots. Is he the idiot or the people telling him to put all their money into game stock, the idiots? I don't know, but I hope he got out all right. So. As far as the strategy goes, some people will make money quick, but most will lose as we discussed, 90% of day traders don't make money. So here's the deal, the get rich quick thing does not work, that is not a long-term strategy. So I hope you do have a long-term strategy. And for those of you, if you happen to be in this Wall Street bets, game stock, you know, community going up, uh, going up against the hedge funds, number one, I salute you. Number two, keep it up, but number three, be smart about it. This is not about the, when it comes to investing, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. So go easy, my friends. So that's it. I hope you appreciated this episode. If you want more of this type of information, check out this episode right here where I teach you how to invest in the stock market today because things have changed. If you have not subscribed to Valuetainment Economics, you can smash that button right down there below and give that like a little smash as well. And as always, save that money to invest save that money all we talk is money all we talk is money all we talk is money all we talk is